Now these are all varieties of plants that in my experience, the seeds can take being frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed and they can take an early sowing like this. Not everything can be planted this way, uh, this early in the year. Hey, it's Greg here at MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd do a video today to follow up on something I did in this garden bed a week ago. It's, uh, I think it's the first day of, of March today and uh, we had a fair, a fair amount of sun last week and this particular bed has been covered with the dome almost all, all winter long. I had about an inch of, uh, some of the beds are frozen, you know, five inches deep or even deeper. The ones that aren't covered are frozen pretty deep. But anyway, this one had about an inch of ice and so I just put this dome over it. It's still quite cold at night getting in, you know, minus eight, minus nine some nights. Um, right now it's around zero and it, it's snowing actually. Hopefully that doesn't mess up my camera too much. I'm gonna make this relatively quick. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd do a follow up and see what state this soil's in. And, uh, and I might have jinxed myself because I brought out uh, some paper here and I brought some seeds. I was gonna plant some, uh, what do we got here? Edox lettuce. Seaside spinach and uh, winter boar kale. Just gotta plant some seeds, so I'm probably jinx, but, uh, and on top of it all, I noticed I didn't tie this bed down, so actually, instead of the, uh, the dome being nicely nestled uh, and, and properly sort of insulated, there's actually a huge air gap here, so this must have blown off a little bit. Luckily, it didn't blow into the house. Um, so this is definitely not a less than ideal. But uh, anyway, let's pop this thing off and see what we got. All right, let's see how workable this is. Uh, yeah, it looks, it looks to me <laughs> like it uh, thawed out, completely thawed out. That's good. So uh, can definitely do some uh, sewing today. It's just a piece of clay there, it's not frozen. Um, yeah, we can definitely sew some stuff today. Uh, so I thought I'd do that as well in this video, do some early sowing, talk about that a little bit, talk about some of the, the things I do to be uh, uh, successful in that. So I'm a no-till gardener, and so people might be, that follow on might be appalled that I've got, uh, you know, my soil being exposed here. But uh, that, that was just to, uh, to thaw it out, right? It thaws out a lot quicker if you can get the sun right on it because it's dark. And, uh, you know, when it's in the minus temperatures all night long, this time of year, uh, you know, you're, you're, working, you're working against nature. And of course you don't have to, uh, and you might notice I don't have gloves on. That doesn't mean it's not cold. I've probably got about five minutes of, of working time here and then the hands will stop to work. And I'll have to pause the camera and we'll warm my hands back up again. <laughs> just, just so you know. If you say, oh my goodness, he hasn't got gloves on. It's not cold. No, it's, you know, it's around zero and kind of uh, overcast. And you know, it'd be different if it was uh, zero and it was nice and sunny and there was no wind, but there's a, a bit of a wind. I hope it's not messing up the sound too bad. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we got, we got this reasonably flattened out. What the heck is that? Blackberry. So my thinking here is that I can get one two, three rows of stuff growing here, which means I need two, uh, two layers of newspaper, to put it that way. Uh, so this is just uh, leaf bags that I cut up like this. Uh, I find that a leaf bag, if you, you cut it down the side, cut the bottom out and lay it out flat, you can get about uh, three, nine inch wide strips, which is a good 
distance between rows, at least I find it to be, for this, for my style of gardening anyway. So these are just leaf bags that I, you know, when I gather my leaves, people put their leaves in these, I just take them. <laughs> they get much more simple than that. All right, so I thought I'd include a little footage of me doing that just with uh, a leaf bag. So, you know, I, I, I uh, troll the, the neighbor's uh, driveways for bags of leaves in the fall, and I throw them all over my g garden beds uh, in the fall, and then I just throw all those bags in the gardening shed. It looks like uh, a big pile of garbage bags in there right now. <laughs> so the process, you can get three strips, I, I think, the length is uh, nine, yeah, nine inches. So from a standard leaf bag, I can't speak to all of them. Um, once you get a nice straight edge on it, and you just cut it off there. Uh, you can get three nine inch wide strips, which I find is a good spacing for a no-till garden uh, between rows, depending on what you're planting, of course. But for things like spinach and kale and stuff like that, it's totally fine, uh, especially since these are gonna be thinned out. So that's the process. You, you cut it out so you got a rectangle and you sort of flatten it onto the floor and then using a, you know, a exacto knife or a pair of scissors or uh, whatever you got. You, uh, I think I'm using a knife there. Um, you, you cut them out. It, you know, it's kind of a tedious thing and it's not, uh, you know, it's something you do on rainy days and you just, you know, when you've got the nothing else to do or you're, you're itching to do something but maybe the weather's not right or the garden's still frozen this time of year uh, you just start stockpiling uh, a whole bunch of materials like this once you get a bunch of them you can sort of just roll them up stick an elastic band around them <laughs> and uh, and then you've got them for when you want to use them and you know the reason I use these in my in gardens between rows is it just keeps the weeds down so much and uh, once the plants are uh, you know a certain height you put uh, your grass clippings or leaves or seaweed or you know whatever uh, yard waste uh, mulching material you can get your hands on you put that on top of the, the paper and the paper just gets disappears it gets you know eaten by worms and stuff like that and uh, it just feeds your soil and it's sort of a win-win because you <laughs> it just it just it makes your weeding that much less and of course it keeps the soil from drying out as well so yeah, that's the general idea. And in no time at all, you can throw together a whole bunch of useful materials like that. And the best way to keep, keep these in place is to just throw a little bit of soil on them. Then they won't blow away, right? That's the general idea. I mean, is this hay gonna cause, uh, so you notice I got hay on the sides here. It's actually just grass clippings. From someone, someone else's leaf bag. Uh, is this going to cause some weeds? Yep. And uh, don't care. Uh, but by and large, the weeds are not a big problem in my garden. For anyone that follows along, you probably noticed. I don't have a lot of weeds, and the weeds I do have, I don't really give them much. Uh, they're not a major cause of concern. All right, so I put one like that. And then another one like that. Uh, sometimes when people see me using leaf bags, they say, oh, isn't there ink in that? Isn't there toxins? Isn't there chemicals? Yeah, I suppose, you know, uh, there's chemicals in everything. You're, you're made of chemicals. You know, people use the word chemicals as a shorthand for toxins, I think. Because if, you know, I would not be worried about chemicals. You breathe oxygen, you drink water, it's all chemical. Water is a chemical, oxygen is a chemical. Right? You're breathing a combination of oxygen and nitrogen and, and a whole bunch of other things go in your mouth every time you breathe. Right? Chemicals are not a problem, it's, it's toxins and poisons and things like that that you're worried about, not chemicals. Every, everything you eat is a collection of chemical compounds. Uh, some of them good, some of them bad. Uh, even in the natural world, there's chemical compounds that are bad, uh, bad for you. Um, but uh, uh, for, for the most part, your body, you know, with the exception of really bad stuff, toxic stuff, your body can handle these things. It can deal with it. 
Boy, you touch that snow, your hands get really cold really fast. I think about half of one of these will do the rest. Like that. You see how easy this is? You know, uncomplicated. Uh, do I have to be out here sewing in uh, March? No, but this just makes everything easier when one garden sews the season's full on. Uh, if these things already be sown, these are seeds that can take the, the temperature extremes that exist this time of year. Someone might ask why am I putting soil on the cardboard just to keep it from blowing away, that's why. Even though I'll have a dome on this, every time you take the dome off, you know, there's the risk of things blowing away. All right, so I got that pretty much roughed out. Now I gotta, I gotta warm my hams back up. I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> All right, so my hands got their second wind now. I'm just putting some uh, furrows in here. Uh, this is, this is no-till gardening at its best sort of thing, right? This is all the preparation the garden needs in the fall. You don't have to use paper like I'm using here. I just find it's, it's, it sort of weed proofs the garden a bit. And uh, it functions as a mulch in all the ways that uh, I consider a mulch to be uh, mulchy, right? The microorganisms will eat it and it suppresses weeds and it retains moisture. And, and of course, as soon as these plants are a certain height, I'm going to mulch this heavily, as I always do with yard waste. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to plant uh, spinach, lettuce, and kale here. A row of each sort of thing. So let's start with the spinach. This is the, uh, what's it called? Seaside spinach. I'm sorry about the wind. The wind picks up around 10 o'clock every day here. So, you know, in an ideal world, I would get out here at 8 o'clock in the morning and do all my filming, but some days there's just other things going on and other priorities and and uh, the YouTube channel has to take, uh, you know, a back seat to uh, children and life and such. All right, here we go. There's the spinach, and the kale now. Now these are all varieties of plants that in my experience the seeds can take being frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed and they can take an early sowing like this. Not everything can be planted this way, uh, this early in the year. You know, for those of the, those people that uh, live in other parts of the world, uh, they might not think, you know, sowing in, uh, in uh, the beginning of March is a, a very big deal. Maybe it's normal where you are, but where I, this part of the world, it's pretty rare to be <laughs> sowing this time of the year. And as you can tell by my surroundings, the world is still pretty, still frozen up pretty good here. And, uh, you know, I actually long-term plans. I plan to grow potatoes in this bed this coming garden season. But uh, the lettuce and kale, this is just a really good bed to get things started in early because it's one of the first ones to thaw out if I have it covered in a dome. So, uh, you know, it just makes a good temporary greenhouse. So I'll grow all this stuff here, and then, uh, you know, around uh, probably the end of June, uh, I'll move anything that can be moved, I'll harvest whatever can be harvested, and I'll plant uh, a fast-growing variety of potato here and harvest them in, like, October. Uh, all right, so before my hands freeze up here, I'm just going to push this soil back, pat it down, now these are all varieties of plants that don't uh, need to be planted very deep, right? So, uh, so, so we're not planting them deep. Uh, 
but it is important to to pat it down get good uh, get good contact with the soil these will probably take a while to germinate they won't germinate like they would in in May or you know April I, mean, I could be wrong you, know, you never know about these things from year to year but uh, you know when you're planting at a season like this uh, you gotta remember that the only activity that really happens happens during the day because at night everything freezes a bit everything goes down to zero and the plant just stops at night so you gotta bear that in mind and you know set your, your expe adjust your expectations accordingly but hopefully if this works and, and you know I do this every year and it tends to work I'll get some nice early spinach and I'll have some uh, early lettuce and I'll have all my kale ready to go so I mean, last year I planted winter boar kale like this around this time of year and I moved them to, into a different part of the garden and they continued the winter boar kale I planted in March continued to grow and I harvested the last of them in December right so uh, you get a lot out of them all right so now I got everything in the ground I got everything sort of sewed and patted down to, to the best of my ability now I'm gonna hit everything with some water I haven't got my hose hooked up or anything here because it's just too cold the hose hose would freeze the soil is pretty the soil is pretty damp anyway but this will just help put the seeds a good soak there we go there's that now people might ask me how often do you have to water this? How much work do you have to do? All that sort of stuff, right? Those sorts of questions. Well, I'm really not going to water this at all. What I like to do under the dome, I got to get something to weigh this down with. It just wants to blow. Hang on one second. All right. Yeah. It can be a bit of a challenge when you're working with wind. Anyone that lives in a windy place understands this element. So you either work in between the gusts or you, you find some way to hold things down and get really frustrated. <laughs> but uh, that stick should do it. So I, by putting this little bit of plastic over top, I'm creating an extra layer of warmth but I'm also creating a set, of, a set of conditions here where the soil won't dry out it'll just stay moist and uh, you know I have to check it after about a week's gone by I have to check it very often as soon as I see something poking out of the ground you got to get this plastic off so I mean this is a great trick for getting things to germinate but if you leave the plastic on uh, after the plant has germinated you're going to cook them and you're going to kill them it's not going to work at all so it's a great trick for getting it's, it's an adaptation of the bagging method you don't have to keep watering the soil you, you basically the water that's in that soil when it heats up it condenses it hits the plastic it evaporates it goes back down into the soil so it just the moisture levels stay exactly the way they're supposed to be uh, but as soon as you see the plant poking up out of the soil as soon as you see a line of green <laughs> you got to get this plastic off you roll it up and use it for the next bed anyway let's see if I can get this uh, uh, position without it blowing around too much and without me losing my mind Pretty good. Any 
anything to weigh it down. Okay, I'm gonna get the dome back on before uh, before this blows off. <laughs> All right, so I got that the way I want it, and uh, the wind's getting crazier and crazier, so uh, I think we're probably done filming for today. But uh, yeah, can you start gardening at the beginning of March? Sure, if you've got your soil thawed out, if you've affected some sort of microclimate that'll allow that sort of warm up to germination temperature uh, for a given amount of time every day, assuming there's some sun. And if you're planting the, a variety of plant that can take those cold temperatures, that can germinate, uh, can germinate when it's cold, but also can handle being pretty much frozen at night. Because uh, while this bed might, the air in this bed might get up to 20 Celsius during the day, room temperature, it's like 67 for Fahrenheit people, uh, or even warmer. And while the soil may warm up to five or even 10 Celsius during the day, uh, it's all getting down to zero or below every night. <laughs> So you need a variety of, uh, a type of plant that can take that. Lettuce, kale, spinach, things like that. I uh, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. <laughs> the wind's going crazy here. <laughs> Don't forget to click the bell. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>